Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show. It is a new year and of course it's time for us to welcome back the very first installment of the Culinary Hotline Bling. Ting, ting, ting! Hey, yep. It is that time and we're officially kicking off 2021 with Chef Clem Pedro. He's in studio and he's going to help you figure out and answer any of your culinary conundrums that you might have. So if you do have a question for Chef Clem, just head on over to our Expresso Facebook page and ask away. How was your New Year's? It was amazing. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. As you can see, we still have our Christmas decor, but we're taking it off this weekend. I'm not taking mine off this year. Are you not? No. Nah. Okay. Mine, well, I mean, <laughs> glitter and light. No, That's staying what up you all want. Yes. That's what you want. So I have the first question here for you. And this one is from Nati Masuku, who says on Facebook, asking you the question, Good morning, Chef Clement. What are the best ingredients and spices for cooking beef stew? Ooh. All right. So I like this question because mm. there's a, a chef trick we were taught in Chef School how to like maximize your stews and your soups. And it's using fresh herbs. It's obviously got a French name, the bouquet garni. The bouquet. Not the bouquet? The no, bouquet. it's a bouquet. All right, very, very simple. You want to name the herbs? Yes, please. Okay. So, this one? Can I smell it? You, you can do anything you want to. I should know this one. I don't know this one. It... I'm so terrible. It's sage. 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 Okay. Sage. Okay. What's underneath the sage? Uh, curry leaves. Okay, I'm going to, okay. This is sage. South Africa. Do you know what this is? Bay you know leaves. what? I'm not going to be angry at you for saying curry leaves, but it's bay leaves. Bay leaves. Okay. Love bay leaves. And these are fresh. These are like names. Bay leaves and sage. Okay. What do you want to call it? What, do you, what would you name it? Um, this is coriander. Parsley. Okay. I believe in you. I believe in you. The last two you're going to get is going to be amazing. Time. Time. <laughs> Time. We got it. We got it. Okay. And Last rosemary. One. Rosemary. Rosemary. <gasps> yes. Okay. This okay. is parsley. It's parsley. Okay. Why did I think it was coriander? They coriander, look similar. They look similar. Absolutely. Flavors different. Very okay. different. So what we're going to do is we're going to build our bouquet garni and it's very, very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to take our parsley first and then we're going to take our sage. We don't have to be delicate with it. We can be a little like rough. Okay. okay. And then a bunch of bay leaves, some rosemary. I love rosemary and food. And, and this is fresh. It actually grows outside our studios. It's mm. a massive bush. And then, so whenever we need, we just like run across the road and we pick it. Okay. okay. So that's going to be my goal actually for this year is to really, really get into a herb garden. Yeah, they are so simple. And also what's really great is, I mean, if you go to Woolies, you buy the potted plants. All you have to do is just water it every now and then and you're good. And you can just trim, trim and... Trim, trim. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just use some butch b butcher's twine. And can I help so you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So I'll you hold can it. hold it for me. I'm an awkward lefty, and I won't cut you. Okay. Okay. So now what I do is I want no, no, just hold Kids, it. don't do this at home. No, don't do this at home. Get your parents to do this. And all we're going to do now is we are going to drop this inside of the pot. Another tip is, I cut it a little short, but to help you later, mm -hmm. leave the long end of the, of the rope on and then tie it onto the handle of the pot and then put it inside the pot. So when you're done, you just fish all of this out and you start, when you start cooking your onions, this is when you drop this in. Okay. It'll fill your whole house with like amazing flavor oh. and it'll just permeate through your stews and your soups every time. Chef Clem, you are teaching me something new now. Just give me that name once again. Bouquet Garni. Bouquet Garni. Oh la la. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe okay. it's Bouquet wow. Garni. Okay, well, honey. Ooh, our phone, our first caller for 20 Yes, I'm so Let's excited. Answer. Culinary Hotline, hello. Hello, Zoe. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Who am I speaking to? This is Mike Rock from Boxburg. Hi, Mike. What's no it? Mike Rock? What an awesome name from <laughs> Boxburg. Thanks, Clemmy. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So what is your question for Chef Clem today? Chef Clem, I would like to know... How do I know when my coals on the bry are hot and ready to go? Ooh. I know, like I've, that one. I, I, I've heard of people doing... Thank you. Thank you, Mike. I, I'm going to put the phone down because he will be able mm -hmm. to hear you right now. Thank you so much, Mike Mike Rock. That's a cool name. From Boxburg. <laughs> wow. Okay, okay. Awesome so name. How do we know when the coals are ready when you do a bry? Okay. So a good thing, especially if you... Even if you're using wood to coals or charcoal to coals, what you want to do is you always want to burn it down until the coal goes white and you have glowing red embers. Maybe can we maybe you get a picture? We're putting them on the. Yeah. There we so go. at so that point, that. let's see. Is that too hot? 
No, it's not. No, it's not. But you, what you're looking for is those little bits of briquettes need to go white. Okay. If you're still seeing majority of it being black, it's not done yet. It's not ready. The reason for that is while it's still black, the temperature is flat. It's just increasing so fast. Anything you put on there is going to burn. Once it goes that ashy white, you're at a more constant temperature. And obviously the glowing red means that you get a good temperature. Another thing for Mike, my friend, if you want to know if your temperature is good for steaks, what you do is you hold down about 30 centimeters away from from the coals. So okay, about 30 so rather than like a ruler? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you can hold it there for three seconds, just, just about three seconds, and then it gets too hot, that's steak temperature. That's steak oh, if so you can hold, Yeah, if you can hold it for five seconds and then take it off, that's chicken temperature. Okay. Just and so you know. Hot? Same as chicken, actually. People cook their burrowors at too high heat, and then the fat ends up rendering out and and then you left with like Ooh. dry. And the people, 2021, we are not poking the sausage <laughs> on the bourrevors anymore. Stop doing that. Why are you doing that? And then all the flavor goes out and then it's bourrevors. It is through You're not voice. making through voice. You're okay. making good voice. Well, Mike, I hope that answered your question. Mike Chef Rock. Clem. Mike Rock from Boxburg. <laughs> what a name. On how to check if your coals are ready. Very yeah. interesting. Very I love that one. Okay. Well, I have another question here yeah. that came through on Box uh, on Facebook. Can you listen Box, to Box Boxbook <laughs> for all the residents of Boxburg. They don't have Facebook. They got listen, Boxbook. this one's just for you. So this one's from Hao that says, instead of using spices, yes. which sauce can I use for chicken or beef? A good thing is if you're not going to use spice, you're looking for a sauce. Your mm -hmm. sauce is then going to become a marinade, Ooh. which is doing amazing things. It's adding flavor and it's tenderizing your meat. A good, let's, let's just, a very simple one that works on beef, lamb, and chicken, and fish. So once you master this, you can then add, like, add some chili to it. You can add some fresh herbs to it, but master this one, which is so simple. It's so easy. So we're going to start off with garlic. And you don't need to like chop it super fine. I just grate it on like the rough side of a grater. Okay. While it's on the fire, it's gonna char slightly and it's gonna just go slightly sweet. And it's gonna add texture. So and that's you gonna... always use fresh garlic. I always use fresh garlic. Um, I do sometimes buy, like when I go to Willie's, I buy the, the garlic, chili, turmeric, <laughs> those mix, because I know that's garlic. Be careful when you buy other like pre-chopped garlic type things from With any other place. With a lot of oil place. in it. And there's other things in there, and okay. we're not doing that. We want to get the proper garlic flavor. Garlic goes in, salt, very important, because the salt's going to brine and it's going to season. So don't be scared. This is um, flake salt, but I would Ooh, recommend that's you- that's a lot of salt. Is it? No, is that okay. Normal? Well, think about it. We're going to be seasoning steak, right? Steak is quite thick, True. and you want the seasoning to get in there. If that's for chicken, Remember, the salt's going to brine, and there's a lot of chicken you're going to cover. We're also going to, like, uh, like dilute the saltiness okay. by adding oil to it, and I'm using some, olive oil. Some olive oil. So you could make, like, a big batch of this, and the longer it sits in the fridge, the more intense it's going to get in flavor. And when you say sit in the fridge, do you marinate the meat in it already, or do you leave just your marinade to the one side? Well, good question. So if you're going to do this on your meat, Overnight is always best. If you're gonna make a big batch of this and just have it in a jar in the fridge, that's also perfectly fine. Every time you need it, just just, just do your thing. Dip into it. Freshly ground bl black pepper. If you're gonna buy um, pre-ground, it's gonna lose its intensity, so you don't wanna do that. Okay. Now, we're gonna do some lemon zest. Again, it's gonna tenderize and add flavor. Also, zest before you juice. Because if you're gonna juice first and you're gonna sit there with like a mushy thing and then try and get the zest off. That's not gonna I work. Mean, it's, I'm just saying. Okay. It's, it happens. Priorities. So there we go. So we're going to go lemon zest. And then we're not going to waste it. The lemon juice goes in. And like I said, super simple. Get that onto your Dude, lamb, onto your chicken. Sharp knife. That should be our goal for sharp 2021. Sharp knives in 2021. There we there go. go. Fish, chicken, <gasps> prawns, lamb, beef. I'm naming everything. Stir Vegetables on there. Everyone's happy. This is a basic marinade that won't go not wrong. Not basic. Well, we I'm don't saying, do okay, basic. Okay, okay. This is the foundation, foundation. of a marinade. Well, how? thank you so much for that question. And if you have any culinary conundrums or foodie questions for Chef Clem, why don't you head on over to our Expresso Facebook page and put your question there.